Well, welcome, guys. So, Jose Cifuentes looks like he will be exiting in the next few days. A great Saturday yesterday for Rangers and Scottish football, I think. And also a very busy week for the club upcoming and a busy day for us here on Glasgow Rangers Nation. So if you like this in the video, guys, busy day yeah, and uh, yesterday and obviously a few things to take care of this morning. So first bit of news uh, concerns our want away midfielder Jose Cifuentes. Now, obviously, many people thought that once that January transfer window closed on the 1st of February, that they'd heard nothing about... Um, Jose Cifuentes, and therefore he would be remaining with the club. However, that is not the case. The Brazilian window actually does not close until March, which is rather bizarre. There we go. It, I don't know what the situation is with these transfer windows. Why FIFA can't have one standardised transfer window across the whole world? God only knows. But there we go. Anyway, according to reports coming out of Brazil this morning, uh, it has been agreed that uh, Cifuentes will join Cruzeiro in the next few weeks. So it does look like that is going to go through and that he is going to be a Cruzeiro player. Um, so it is a verbal agreement, apparently, that has been initially reached between Rangers and Cruzeiro. Um, and that will obviously be firmed up in the next three or four days, according to the reports. Obviously, you know, slightly sadder that obviously the this hasn't really worked out for Jose Cifuentes. You know, the situation got a little bit complicated, didn't it, around deadline day with people talking of uh, Sunderland allegedly been interested in securing Cifuentes. Uh, Michael Beale obviously bringing Jose Cifuentes to Rangers in a in a sort of, I don't know, uh, after he chased him for ages and sort of this fanfare of this is the midfielder we've been looking for. This is a game changer, something that simply has not happened as Jose has really failed to settle in Glasgow. Uh, it looks like it will be a loan with an option to buy for around two to two and a half million pounds, which would represent a, about a million pound profit on the deal for Rangers, which would be excellent, uh, considering obviously we paid that million pounds for him when we didn't really need to. We could have waited obviously until December to get him. But Beal was so anxious to get hold of Jose Cifuentes uh, because he was going to be a game changer. Obviously, he does nothing against the lad. Obviously, I just think it hasn't worked for him. And we wish him all the best at Cruzeiro. We should hope it works out for him. Hope he goes from strength to strength there in the Brazilian Serie A, I think they call it out there. Well, yesterday was a fantastic day for Rangers with that lot from across the city uh, dropping points to Aberdeen, which was an absolute massive surprise for me because, you know, you, apparently I didn't watch the game. I don't watch Celtic. The only time I ever watch Celtic is when they play us. Um, you know, it's not something I'd want to do. I'd probably be physically sick if I had to do it. Um, there's a lot of things I'd rather be doing than watching Celtic, like clean the toilet or something like that. But apparently Aberdeen played exceptionally well yesterday and were very, very unlucky not to win the game. Um, there were some very dodgy decisions in the game as well, apparently. Uh, Naroki, their central defender, Celtics, apparently taking out Bojan Miovsky. And I've actually seen the clip on Twitter a few times and how the guy isn't booked, I don't know. He'd already been booked. Oh, I've forgotten. Of course, you, you can't book a Celtic player after he's been booked once because that would involve sending him off. And that just simply doesn't happen in Scotland, does it? Because we all know the reasons behind that. Um, a goal that as well, a dodgy goal that should have been that should have been allowed for Aberdeen, a dodgy goal that should have been disallowed for Celtic. It's again a classic day in the SPFL when it comes to that lot from across our city. But Rangers did what they needed to do, and what for me was more encouraging yesterday about the game was, look, you you go back across time, you go back across you know Rangers results after they uh, they have slipped up, you know. You often find, don't you, that we mess it up, that we slip up, that we go and drop points as well. I mean, you've only got to go back to last season and you look at the, you know, the Motherwell game at Parkhead. They go there, get a point. We then go to Pitoji the next day and completely screw it up. Um, but Philippe Clement has this team really believing, really pushing, really being a team that, you know, when it sees a gap, when it sees an opportunity to get in there and to put its foot down and chase down that lot from across the city. They take it. Philippe Clement has turned this team into a machine with the right mentality, with a winning mentality. And that, for me, is absolutely key. And I think that will stand us in good stead for the rest of the season. Now, obviously, Tuesday is a massive game. Saturday means nothing if we don't follow it up, at, follow it up with a win on Tuesday. That's the uh, next SPFL game before the Cup games on Saturday when we play Air United, uh, which will be an interesting one with former Celtic player Scott Brown returning to Ibrox. I'm sure he'll get a very friendly welcome from the Ibrox crowd. But 
look, we'll, we'll obviously we'll look more ahead to Tuesday, you know, over the next couple of days and obviously on the podcast tonight with Laura. Um, but look, yesterday, I think we did very, very well indeed. There were some very impressive performances, some really encouraging performances. And the second half in particular, you know, we saw a real drive from Rangers, a, a real ability, a real quality controlling performance. And, you know, you listen to some of the post-match comments of Davey Martindale. I, you know, I've got a lot of respect for Davey, but some of the comments that he made post-match were utterly ridiculous. Um, Livingston were yesterday the very definition of anti-football, weren't they? They were even more anti-football than a, than a Jose Mourinho team. And that takes some doing to be even more anti-football than Jose Mourinho. But they really were yesterday. But, you know, what was the encouraging things to bring out of yesterday? Well, the first thing to encourage was, of course, the unveiling, official unveiling of Baba uh, Mohamed Diamande or Diamande Mohamed Baba, whatever the guy's full name is now. Let's just call him Mohamed Diamande. Uh, he was unveiled before the game. A lot of people questioning why he wasn't in the matchday squad. Well, we know that he is not injured. Thank God. It is the fact that he has not played since the end of November in that game that Norges Land beat Ryan Kent's Fenerbahce 6-1. He still needs time to get back up to speed, to get his fitness back, to get his match fitness back. And I'm sure over the coming weeks with the training sessions, over the coming weeks with the games, we'll start to see Diamande being slowly phased into the team. So very encouraging indeed. Now, the team that that uh, Philippe Clement raised did, you know, I think stunned one or two people. Obviously, the first one of the things that came off was the fact that Dujon Sterling was not in the team, but that is because he is injured. Should be good to go by the weekend, apparently. It is an impact injury, um, a muscle soreness injury. That is that is it. It's nothing serious, hopefully. But we all know where that often leads with Rangers players, don't you? It's not serious. It's not going to be. End of the week, four weeks later, the guy's still out. Let's hope with Dujon Sterling that is not the case. But look, that happens with Dujon. When you've got a player who doesn't just tackle people, he goes through them when he gets the ball. You've got that possibility. The back four, again, I think a bit of a surprise with Borna Barisic. Mistake. I think that mistake was further compounded when Ridvan came on. I thought Ridvan was absolutely excellent yesterday when he came on. Gave us so much more going down the left-hand side than Borna did. Dynamism attacking that shot that could have easily gone in. I mean, Ridvan, Ridvan, Ridvan Dino, definitely. Um, Rid, Ridvan Carlos, you know, anything like that, guys, would fit with that guy. I mean, he just looks not... Not, you know, a bit better than Borna. He looks streets, light years ahead of what anything that Borna Barisic brings. And look, I know we need rotation, but with a back four, I believe you need to stay the same. Now, obviously, worrying news yesterday that Leon Balogun had to come off. Apparently, he's broken a bone in his cheek. Um, but apparently, Leon wants to carry on. He is a warrior, as Philippe Clement himself said. So, I think, you know, he probably will miss the Aberdeen game, maybe, with that injury. But, um, you know, look, let's look at it this way. Um, you know, he is going to be back hopefully very soon indeed. And Leon's been fabulous. I thought Barrett, I thought Lundstrom and Jack made it made well, played well. I thought getting an hour into Jack was good. Uh, McCausland did very well until he came off. Very well, good performance. Matondo hit and miss, but got his goal. And we'll talk about that shortly. I thought Cantwell was excellent second half. Not, was okay first half. Not terrible, not brilliant, but okay. Second half was absolutely excellent. Um, I thought Silva was brilliant. I thought Fabio Silva was absolutely superb. And, you know, Fabio Silva goes, he gets his goal. A real centre-forwards goal, wasn't it? You know, it falls to him in the box, he spins, he hits it, and it goes into the back of the net. You know, a quality performance. But it wasn't just that for me with Fabio. His movement, he's dragging players all over the place, he's offering for the ball, he's coming back and linking. He just offers so much more than Sibyl Dessas does for me. And I just think that, you know, Silva is going to be a fundamental player for us. You know, he looks, he's starting to look like that £35 million player. And that goal yesterday, I think, silenced a few critics that he's had since he's come to the club. The second goal was a fantastic finish, obviously, by Rabi Matondo. Again, someone who's had some criticism over the last week's a brilliant bit of move. Stops, checks, comes inside, stands the defender up, curls it in, makes it 2-0 before half time. A phenomenal Phenomenal goal from Rabi. I thought Rabi did quite well yesterday. Um, you know, after like I say, he had received a little bit of criticism over the past games. And then the third goal was a thing of utter beauty. Ross McCausland down the right, lovely ball through a defender's legs. Todd Count went onto it, first time hit. Now I think a lot of us underestimate the the difficulty of a first time hit, guys. It, you know. When you run onto the ball and you hit through it first time, there's always a risk that you go get under it and it goes flying over or, you know, you don't get the control on it or you don't get the placement right. Well, Todd Cantwell, absolutely spot on yesterday. Great body position, great finish for him to make it 3-0. So, you know, overall, a very good performance. And again, it was a game we could have made four, five, six easily. The Ridvan shot, they hit the bar. The Dessers miss. Oh, my God, how the hell he missed that chance, you know unmarked, drops to him and he leans back, swings and it's 
apparently still somewhere in orbit, the International Space Station, have recovered the ball, I have been told, uh, from from orbit. But uh, that, for me, is kind of the enigmatic nature of serial deaths and why Fabio Silva needs to start the vast majority of games going forward. Look, it was a good performance yesterday, an excellent performance. I thought the back four, I thought Goldson had a very good game yesterday after his dodgy game against St Mirren. I thought Suter was excellent when he came on, continuing what he's done recently. Ridvan was phenomenal again. Just his attacking threat and his, his presence of mind to get at players. He's starting to look like that quality fullback we bought and why we bought him. He just looks unbelievably good. And it's like I said, hang on to him because I, do you know what? That lad is going to be worth 10, 11, 12 million by the season's end. He is that good. Don't underestimate what he's going to be capable of. A good Euros for Turkey, he's going to be worth a lot of money in my estimations. You know, the midfield, I thought Jack played well, offered himself, had that shot as well that was tipped around the post by Shamal George. Lunny was great again, did very, very well indeed. I thought McCausland played well. He was direct again, attacked the fullback, did, did exactly what we asked him. Matondo was OK. Um, Camwell was excellent yesterday. Silva was brilliant. You know, I, I just was really pleased. And, we, and I thought second half, we were starting to see some of what Philippe Clement wants to see. Fast, quick passing, little triangles around the box, trying to unlock those low block defences. There was some lovely football played second half by Rangers, some real quality. And, it, you know, you look at it at the moment, there's one team on the up and there's one team on the down in Glasgow. The green and grey are on the down and the red, white and blue are on the up, I think. So we go into the game on Tuesday night, which won't be an easy one, guys. You know, look, they're going to be bang up for it again. They played well against that lot from across the city. And again, you know, they always raise their game when they play us. Yes, it's at Ibrox and we owe them for that 3-1 defeat. We need to get our own back. I would hope that, you know, the team would be probably something similar. Again, I think, you know, personally speaking, um, you've got to go with, with with similar players. I think, you know, you go with Butland in goal. You go with the back four of Tav, Goldson, Suter, and it's got to be Ridvan. I mean, you cannot play Barisic against Aberdeen. It's got to be Ridvan. I think Lunny comes, is obviously there. I think Raskin probably comes back into the squad as well for that game. Um, I think the three behind the striker, you go, it's got to be McCausland, Cantwell and Matondo again. And you take, and it's got to be Fabio Silva up front for me. His movement will cause them problems. His ability to get in behind will cause them problems. So that would be my team for the game. But obviously we'll build up more towards the Aberdeen game over the coming days as we build up towards Tuesday. Guys, it looks so much better these days, doesn't it? It does look a lot better. I mean, if you consider as well, when Philippe Clement took over this team, we were some eight points. That's right. Some eight points behind that lot from across the city. And they were very much talking, weren't they? As if it's over, it's done and dusted. The league is out. The league is theirs. It's, you know, just forget it. Just forget it. It's all done and dusted. You know, Rangers won't win Jack. And you know what? That daylight, that breathing space is is well, hopefully, hopefully going to be gone over the next couple of weeks. You know, you look at that table now and you look at how the table presents itself on the on Sunday, the 4th of Feb. And you cannot help but be encouraged by where Rangers sit in that table and how they sit behind that lot from across the city. I mean, just look at it. It's only three points behind. We have a game in hand. We win that game in hand. It's level on points. The goal difference is down to only plus two now as well. Our form is spot on coming out of that defeat in the old firm game. We've got them to play at Ibrox. It is all looking very good indeed. Um, you know, goals for have been boosted. Our goals against are excellent. 11, the best in Scotland. Only five, five goals better off than that lot from across the city. You know, this is a table that is looking very promising for, for Rangers. A league that is looking very promising for Rangers. And at the end of the day, it's all down to one man for me. And that is Philippe Clement. Well, guys, please smash that sub, ring that notification bell and help the channel to keep on growing. Come and join us for the podcast tonight. Myself and Laura Hatton will be talking all things Rangers from half past seven. So please come and join. As always, guys, thank you so much for your phenomenal, phenomenal support. It is amazing. I love your comments. Love everything you do, guys, to support the channel. And on the way out, if you can do two things for me, number one, smash the like. And number two, remember always, we are the people. Mm -hmm.